Interesting. Would you rather be hit by a 0.0027 kilogram ping pong ball or a 16 kilogram bowling ball? The answer, of course, is... If we consider these two situations, one, this little girl pushing a bowling ball down an alley, and this guy who's going to shoot a ping pong ball out of this long, long tube. Now, he's using as force the atmospheric pressure, which is 14.7 pounds per square inch. Let's see what happens to this can at the end of this long tube. Do you think you'd still rather have that ping pong ball hit you? I think not. Besides the mass of the object that's going to hit you, we also must consider velocity. When we put these two together, mass and velocity, we are referring to momentum, signified here by P. Now when a ball hits us, we're going to apply a force to change its momentum. So delta MV is change in momentum. But wait, force doesn't equal a change in momentum. We know that force equals mass times acceleration. How do we make this work? Well, if we remember that acceleration equals a change in velocity over the time, we can then substitute delta V over T in for A. That gives us force equals mass delta V over T. If we diagonal slide the T, we end up with force times time equals the mass times the change in velocity. So a force applied for a certain amount of time is equal to the change in momentum. So it's not just the force your body applies the ball, it's also the time that force is applied. These two things will change the momentum of the ball, bring it to a stop. The force times time is known as the impulse. The force alone is known as the impact. So we have an impact applied over a certain amount of time. We can apply a small force over a very large period of time or a large force over a very small period of time. Either way, the change in impulse is the same, but the effect on the car is drastically different. This is why boxers move away when they're getting punched and they don't step into the punch. Ouch!